Hey guys, it's Navjot Singh Jadeja here. Welcome to ED Technology. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss one dimensional array. In earlier lecture, we have already discussed what is an array and also we have seen how arrays are declared or stored. In today's lecture, we will be talking on one dimensional array. I hope you have referred my earlier lecture. That would help in order to connect with this lecture. So, uh, this is how the arrays are declared. The values are stored in the same name of a variable with multiple values stored in the same type of the same type and it's one dimensional because it's the horizontal storage which we are seeing right now. So one dimensional array is something which is stored or declared in this way. So in order to declare a one dimensional array we need a type. So we are also parallelly seeing an example. So type is the data type of the variable which you want to store in the array. As I mentioned in the earlier video, I am repeating again, array can only store single type of data. So that is the integer we are declaring here, then the variable name. So below uh, there is an example, we were continuing with the same thing. So it is x. If you are referring this material for the examination purpose, when the question is asked what is one dimensional array you have to declare the syntax as well as the example for the same. So here the type is int, the variable name is x and the size is 5. So this is declaration for one dimensional array and this is how the storage will have. It will always be a continuous allocation and x would have 5 values storing option and as we have discussed in the earlier one also earlier video that it will start from zero at element up to the maximum element which is the size of an array and this is how you can use the different data types to declare different array and different size so we have here float height we have care name care name array is nothing but the strings but furthermore on the strings we'll be seeing in the future videos. So going further initialization of one dimensional array just like initialization of every variable can be done in two ways arrays can also be declared in two ways that is compile time and run time. So before declaring an array array must be initialized before use. So either you are storing the you know the blank values null values or you are giving some values otherwise it will contain the garbage value garbage value is the value which is coming due to empty arrays and it will be depending on the processor and the you know storage mechanisms which you are using the two stages of initialization which you can use in a single dimensional array which is a compile time or the runtime so as I, as i mentioned earlier uh, variables can be declared two ways. Compile time is while you are writing the program. Runtime is when it is executing and it is asking the users to put in the value. So uh, we have a notepad in here. So let us see how the compile time declaration is done. So I'll show you uh, the basic syntax. You can also try the same uh, in order to get the practice of the array. Okay, so. B, uh, yes, I have forgotten the hash. So I'm going with a very basic program. Uh, please, uh, you know, follow the coding mechanisms which you have learned by yourself. So let us say I'm declaring integer x5. So that is the size of the array. It's an integer. So if I am declaring this compile time, I can declare value right here there is one two three four five and and i can go on with the logic of the program logic of the program and end it so this is one way of declaring which is compile time so similar thing we will be seeing in here. So the compile, compile time declaration has the type, variable name and the size. And we can put in the list of values. 
just I showed you in the notepad. Also, this is the example. So, if you have heights of three students from the class, you can have float height because the heights are normally in the floating point value. That is what we are used. So, you can use float height and the size of three and store the values if you have the values right below before the program is executed. And also you can write a store in the other way where you are giving the zeroth element, first element or the second element. Also, if you have the list of values while at compile time, you can keep giving the size. It will automatically take up the size of number of variables which you are taking or declaring at the compile time. Or you can use the other mechanism also. As I said, for the string, you can declare the size by the, the name of the variable is name and we are stored John, J-O-H-N. When you are storing the variables in the form of characters, you need to use the single quote and then separate them by the comma. The fifth character, which is an empty character, which does not have a value, has to be specified with a null. Otherwise, as mentioned earlier, would take up a garbage value. Similarly, you can declare in multiple forms. So please pause the video in here. Try to go into your uh, compilers, online compilers, offline compilers. If you're using, uh, you know, Turbo C or you're using maybe, uh, you know, Code Tantra or some other thing, go there, try to code something. The other way of initializing is runtime initialization. So here we have the, you know, floating point value, the H is the name. And you can use the scanner. Also, remember that if you are using the larger size of an array, you can replace this with a for loop. So here we are trying to have a program which is a demo program for largest number, and we have taken the values of 10 people. Right? It can be the height, it can be the weight, it can be just 10 different numbers. So you can uh, customize your program according to this. So we have an array which is n, we have a largest where we are storing the largest value and we have an i which is a looping variable. So first part is where we are taking a for loop to store this. I would advise you to parallelly program this if required pause the video, go back, understand it. While you are doing this, please parallelly program in some uh, compiler or an editor. So uh, then the code says that you are storing the value of the first variable into the largest and within the loop, the loop logic says you are comparing each variable from 1 which is post 0 after 0 to 1 and then storing the largest value whichever turns out to be and then finally outside the loop you are printing the largest value. So this is how you will be using a one dimensional array. Again, please like, share and subscribe the channel to come across more and more videos. Please program this. If you have any doubts, discuss in the comment section. And I hope you are having a good time learning through this. Thank you so much. If you have any feedback, please, please comment in the comment section. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day.